Okay, here's another take on the failed car rental business. All right, this is what I want you to do. It's a few simple steps. Go below, subscribe to the new YouTube channel, then watch the next video. And then watch this whole video. Watch the whole video so you get everything. All right, this is another take on the car rental business. This is someone called The Upgrade. And I'm gonna let, I'm gonna insert her video here and let you see the whole thing. The whole thing. And you will hear, see and hear things that I talked about when I was in the car rental business. So let's go ahead and let the upgrade play. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm gonna try to get through this video without getting too emotional. But as you can see from the title, my business failed. So, <laughs> welcome back to my channel. Happy New Year. I haven't seen you all since, I think it was like November of last year. So let me know in the comments, how have you all been? I miss YouTube so much. Now that it is May, I am planning on being super consistent. I have so much to say, so much to talk about. Today we are gonna talk about how my business failed. I felt like this was the perfect video to start with because I wanted to let you all in on what's going on in my life. So as you see some of my other videos that I have planned, you'll already know kind of what has happened. I'm not gonna say I failed at entrepreneurship altogether, but that business did fail. And I'm actually very happy about it. I'm so glad to close that chapter of my life out. I was very miserable. In this video, we are gonna talk about just what I did wrong, some takeaways from the business, and what is planned for me right now. Okay, so this is not sponsored, but if you're interested in getting this hair, this is from my sister's hair company, Red Ribbon Extensions. So I'll leave the website down below. Let's get into how this business failed. It's so many things. Okay, let's start with number one. I did not do enough research. Just in case you're new here, when I started this business, I was just supposed to be an investor. So I was told what cars I needed to buy. I just bought them and went from there. What I wish I would have done was my own research because I would have known that the cars that I got were not the best cars to get. For one, I should have done more research on the car market back in 2022. At the time, there was a chip shortage, so cars were very expensive. And in my head, I'm thinking, well, maybe that's just the car market, but now prices have drastically decreased. All of my cars, I'm upside down by at least 50%. I wish I would have looked more at the numbers. Another thing that I should have done more research on is what type of audience I would attract with the cars that I had. So a lot of people were triggered when I said that Dodge Chargers and Challengers attract a certain type of clientele, which is really um, criminals. I wasn't saying a particular race, but I think we all know what kind of people would want to get Chargers and Challengers. Unfortunately, it's just the truth. Those cars have been stolen multiple times. I didn't know that there was a death ring in Atlanta. So a lot of the situations that happened, had I done the research, I would have known that those are the cars I should have avoided. Those cars in particular gave me a lot of headache. Big mistake, okay? You live and you learn though. Another reason why my business failed, and I think it's one of the, I'll just say this, you really have to make people earn your trust and not just give it to them. I don't wanna sound like a victim or anything because honestly, I should have had a little bit more discernment. I'm in Scamlanta, the fraudsters and the tricksters, it's a lot of them. Even mechanics, they'll rip you off too. You just have to be careful. Another thing when it comes to trusting the wrong people, customers too. The customers that I work with the longest ended up taking advantage of my kindness. They have been working with me for so long. So when it was a situation where, oh, they didn't get paid this day or this week or whatever, I would make an exception and just tell them to pay me later. You work with me this long, I'd have made so much money with this person. No problem. That was a problem. I should have never done that because you give people an inch, they'll take a mile. Understand this when it comes to friendships, family, anyone. Users, they will take everything from you if their goal is to take. You can't be nice to everyone, it sucks, but you just can't. Something else I did wrong in business was operating in survival mode. When I started losing cars and accidents, and unfortunately due to the way the accidents happened, insurance did not cover majority of my claims. I would say out of all the accidents and incidents I've had, my insurance has covered maybe one. So after I started losing money from 
all these repairs and everything, I started to buy more cars to replace the cars that were down for a couple of months. Big mistake because I was moving in fear. Scared that I was about to lose it all and I might have to take the cars back or file bankruptcy. That was my greatest fear. So I started to add more cars to cover the expenses on the other cars and those cars ended up being crashed too. When you start getting to that point, just quit. Quit. Take a break, take a breather. Being in that survival mode type mindset, it did not help. It made things actually 10 times worse. That was number three. So number four was not quitting sooner. I talked about this on my TikTok. I should have quit months ago. My biggest regret is not quitting back in June. When I quit this year, it changed my perspective on so many other factors, including personal friendships, everything. It took me to get to that point where I was in the bed, crying, couldn't get out of bed. I would take my son to school and go back to sleep. I couldn't even, I couldn't even be a mom. I was down that bad. I felt like a failure. I felt like God had turned his back on me because where were you when all this stuff was happening? You have people that I trust stealing from me. I don't talk about God a lot ever. My failures were to bring me closer to God because I had completely abandoned my relationship with God when I was doing this. I heard this quote that says, failure is not an option, it's a necessity. And at first I did not understand that, but now I do. Failure is a necessity. Once you fail, you're not gonna be afraid of failure. There's nothing that scared me more than failing at this and having my credit score impacted and not having a certain amount of money. Losing the cars, I was terrified. Now, I ain't scared of nothing at this point. All right, number five, a mistake I made was not having more than one stream of income. That way I wouldn't have to rely so much on just one stream. Don't rely on one stream ever. Make sure you have at least two lined up before you quit your job, two. The sun just came up, so I think that's a sign. What did I do right? What are the good things or some takeaways I got from this? Number one, I do believe in leveraging other people's money slash leveraging debt if you do it in a very strategic way and you don't over leverage. I used the snowball method by Dave Ramsey to become debt free. I would say that that was very nice to not have any debt, any loans. But now that I see that you can make money from leveraging debt, I just say do it carefully. Number two, I definitely learned how to be a tougher person. I feel like I was always a tough person. This business definitely gave me a backbone that I really needed to go into the next level. So whatever it is that's coming next, I'm, I'm gonna be prepared. Number three, I will say that I love the freedom for working for myself. I don't see myself driving in a bunch of traffic to go to work unless it's something that I really enjoy doing. I heard someone say years ago that they would rather make 50K a year as an entrepreneur than 100K a year at a job, and I see it now. Because when do you have time for you? When do you have time for your family? You know? So it's nothing wrong with working nine to fives. I'm not talking about that. If you like your job, nothing wrong with that. I'm not knocking it. What I'm saying is, for me, I did like the freedom of being able to wake up kind of when I felt like it and go out and run my errands when no one was outside because Monday through Thursday, everything is empty. But then on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, everything is packed. I don't even do stuff on the weekends anymore. It's almost just crazy how they set up this system. Number four, I learned about taking risks. I know that we really boost up. Just do it, just take the risk. Please have a plan, have an exit strategy, do it strategically, but take the risk because we only have one life. Can I tell y'all a quick story? Me and my mom went to Augusta to go pick up one of my cars and this was recent and there was a motorcyclist that looked like he had passed away on the road. Um, a car had hit him, right? And all I could think about was I wonder what he had planned today. You know what I'm saying? He probably had something to do. We don't know where this man was headed. He probably had plans for tomorrow. You can't overthink everything in life. You know, what I'm saying is seeing that kind of changed my perspective on life a little bit because sometimes I do think we take life too serious. I'm just focused on being happy more than anything. I went from an 803 credit score, debt free and all of that, and I wasn't happy then to making a couple thousand dollars, I wasn't happy then, to now being at zero. And I feel like I'm the most at peace now. I'm not gonna say happy, but I feel like I'm the most at peace here. Which brings me into the last point, which is what's next for me. I don't know. I don't have a plan. I wish I could come on here and I've been pressing myself to try to 
tell you all something, but I don't know. I just surrendered. I don't know what's gonna happen. I feel that everything is gonna happen when it's time to happen. I will tell you what I've been thinking about. I have been thinking about selling my house. I love this house, I'm grateful for this house, but I'm kind of ready to move on. I didn't wanna keep the property and rent it out because I really have no desire to be a landlord. And it really wouldn't make sense since to rent it out because the numbers are so low okay so i did the comps which is just the comparables i would only profit about 200 dollars a month which is 2400 dollars a year and i know it's not all about money it's about getting the asset paid off but to me that kind of i don't know i'm all over the place with my life so i just said i'm gonna wait when you don't know what to do do nothing a lot of you ask, what did I do with the cars? I'll be so honest, I wish I had a better strategic plan, but I told them, come get the cars. Now, some of them are in the process of being paid off because they were totaled, or um, they're in the process of being paid off because they were deemed a lemon. I literally told the banks, y'all can come get them. Now, I know I could file for bankruptcy, but I would just rather get the cars back and see what happens, I'm being honest. <laughs> I don't know. I was gonna keep two for myself, which was gonna be the Hornet and the Kia, which are my only two economy cars. I am gonna keep the Kia, but the Hornet doesn't work and they don't know how to fix it. So I just really bought crappy cars, really. Again, I'm not trying to have everything all figured out. I didn't wanna come off like I just have these great plans. I, I don't know. I don't know. So just pray for me. I'm just remaining hopeful. I've been doing renovations, as you can see. I, painted my wall and I did little things just in case I do decide to sell so I could just pack up and move out. Just going with the flow, really. But that is really all that I have for you today. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. If you are interested in doing the Turo rental car business, I am not saying that it's not profitable. I don't recommend private. I don't really know anyone doing private rentals that's just killing the game. Personally, I don't know them, but I think that Tarot could be profitable. So don't let my experience turn you off. This is just my experience. It was not meant for me. Okay, but I do hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you gained something from it. If you will, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you all in the next video. Interesting, right? She had wrecked cars. She had stolen cars. Now she's at the position where she's going to let the bank come take the cars. Now, when I was doing the car rental business, I actually paid cash for my cars. And one of the things I don't think I ever talked about was it literally took me two years to sell the majority of the cars, the majority of the cars. I actually still have two cars that are at the mechanics that they can't figure out how they're fixed. Remember she said in there, there were cars they couldn't fix? So my thoughts are a lot of YouTubers, a lot of TikTok people, a lot of Instagram people were straight up lying to you about the positive benefits of the car rental business. Because before I created the Kill Switch Chronicles and started to outline all of the bad things about the car rental business, no one was talking about it. And after I came out with the Kill Switch Chronicles, this is when you started to see videos like Tony's cars. He's in Kentucky. He's literally changed out his fleet because he was having so many problems with the Hellcats and the Chargers. The same thing the upgrade said, same thing. And one of the things is, fortunately for me, I was able to figure out that this was a bad business model in general. And now you're getting, you're getting, you know, fortunately for me, I was able, I was in a position where I could pay cash for my cars. Huge, huge thing. Uh, I'm gonna leave a comment on her video telling her not to sell her house. Because this is one of the things that's gonna happen. When they start coming for those cars and pick up the cars, her credit score is going to crash. And she will not have good credit, I would say for five or six years. And it would be impossible for her to buy another house in five or six years. So keep your house, keep making the payments, keep your credit going. And then five or six years in the future, if you wanted to get out that house, it would be much easier for you to get out the house and for you to get into another house. In five or six years in the future, you will be much more well-established. But here is another person who had the same exact problems that I had, and she was doing 
Toro. I was doing hire car. She had the same exact problems. Wrecked cars, stolen cars. And now this is another thing that helped me. Um, since I paid cash for my cars, fortunately for me, I was able to get rid of the majority of the cars while the market was still somewhat healthy. Now, oh my God, car prices have crashed. You know, this is one of the things that uh, literally you will see. Uh, if I was on the position where I had loans, and this is something she said in the video, that her car balances were 50% upside down. 50%. So if I was in that position, because fortunately I sold the majority of them, because it took me two years to sell those cars. But I would say I sold 22, 23 of them in about a year. And then it started to slow down. But I got rid of the majority of them. And this is something else too. Insurance payout. Fortunately for me, on the wrecked cars, the insurance company paid out. Because this is one of the things that if you're going to be renting cars, you've got to be on top of your documentation. You've really got to be on top of your documentation. you got to report the rates. So fortunately for me, every wrecked car, I got insurance money for it. And for the stolen cars, uh, the Range Rover, which is just a, a crazy story to me, the insurance company actually paid out on that stolen car because one of the things that I never did is I closed out rentals. I never, I just let the rental keep riding, kept emailing the person, had proof. And then when I got it and emailed it to the insurance company, about three weeks later after I got the police report, I got a check that, and this is what's funny about the Range Rover. The check I got from the insurance company was adjusted where I made $3,000 more than I paid for the Range Rover because car prices were still high at that time. So for the majority of the cars I had, I got close to what I paid. In some cases, I got more than what I paid. And then as we dragged it out, this is when I started taking big hits. And some of the cars I had to sell were like one guy, I had a blue BMW. He literally drove it into the ground. There was something wrong with it. He didn't tell me there was something wrong with it. He just kept driving it. And um, I ended up, I paid 6,500 for that car. And they ended up selling it as a crash car. Once again, I was like, this car doesn't, you know, because the color of the car is what sold it. It was a beautiful blue color. Um, I sold this car for 2,500 in this condition, they came with a truck, they came with a tow truck and we were able to, the car would start and it wouldn't move so I was able to get it on the trailer of the tow truck. But the, the, this is one of the things she, she mentioned in her video, the number of wrecked cars. At one point I had 12 wrecked cars, 12 wrecked cars out of 31 and you know, it was higher than 30% of the cars I had on hand, wrecked, something was wrong with them. And fortunately for me, and this is something else she said in the video, I had more than one source of income. Thank God, because uh, the car rental business, I made, in six months, I made like 168,000, but due to insurance costs, the rental of the office, people breaking stuff, people wrecking cars, people having flat tires, None of that money was realized as something called profit. It went straight back in the business just to pay for stuff. So, you know, the car rental business, and this is one of the things that's like, you know, at the moment I'm running ads and people like to say, well, you know, go to YouTube and look at the failed car rental business. I, I want you, you know, and I'm putting this video up here for a reason. A lot of people who were doing Toro came to YouTube and straight up lied to you. They did not misinform you. They did not have a uh, specific set. They just straight up lied to you about the car rental business. Now, there's someone, all things real, he has a car rental business. He hardly ever talks about it. He rents private and he makes sure that he gets people with insurance that if they wreck his cars, that their insurance will pay for his cars. Because um, Having a rental car business and renting cars, the car insurance is crazy expensive. So once again, he runs his car rental business in a totally different way. 
He rents it private and he rents Highline Exotics because I think he has a Ferrari. I think he has a BM. I think he has a Rolls Royce Cullinan and all this other stuff. So this is a very different car rental market and it's a very different way. And I also think he paid cash for all his cars. So that's another big issue right there because when the cars aren't renting, they're not sucking a hole in his pocket because he got to make car payments. But one of the things that people don't seem to understand with the car rental business, can you make money with the car rental business? I think you can if you run it in a smart and sophisticated way. But the way that I was running my car rental business, I was dependent upon hire car. I got the worst people possible and I'm going to go ahead and say why these people were worse. And this is something that I'm going to do a video on the new channel talking about this, because one of the things I consistently see with people with low income, bad credit is a lack of proper cleanliness behaviors. Uh, this is one of the things I'm seeing with my phone calls. I've talked to doctors, I've talked to a president, I talk, and these folks are early for the phone call, right? But the people with the low credit scores, they're the worst people to have on the phone call. Number one, they typically do not have a system where they organize their day where they know, oh, at this time I have a phone call. They, they don't even have a calendar that they put stuff on. So there's a parallel, because like I said, I'm working on this video that I'm gonna do on the new channel, but I just put this here to show you what a terrible, terrible business the car rental business is if you're using hire car, hire car, absolutely terrible. And this is a Toro experience, a Toro experience. And she's at the point where she says in the video, she's just going to let the banks come pick up the cars. She's going to let the banks come get the cars. Why would you let the bank come get the cars? Cause you ain't making no money. And another thing she said that she was so depressed, and this is something that I share with her because literally, let's pretend this is a phone. I had a phone for the car rental business. I grew to hate that phone. I would roll over in the morning and look at that phone and see I had messages and I would literally just start cussing because typically that phone was the bringer of bad news, just consistently bad news. And one of the things that I ran into with the bad news is people were doing things in a crazy manner. Like one of the, one of the calls I hated worse was like someone rent a car and they would have a flat tire and then they would be on me to go fix and replace that tire. Now here's the thing. Typically I was making from 35 on the lower end model per day up to we'll say 95 on one of the higher end cars per day. So let's say how much the tire cost. And these were BMWs, Range Rovers, Mercedes. These cars ran on low profile tires. These low profile tires could be anywhere from 185 up to $500 per tire. I had a guy that was driving the Porsche SUV, wrecked the tire, took the tire to Butler, the car, the car to but had to have it towed. It was 140. Then I took the tire, the Butler tire, and they were 22 inch rims. The tire was 485. So 140, so we're at 585. We're at $620 on that one broken tire. And he rented the car for a week. So that was a losing proposition. And this is one of the things that I, I really begin to hate about the car rental business because literally a flat tire would just kill the rental. A flat tire would often leave me in the negative because I would have to get the tire. I, one, I had to tow the car. Then I would have to get the tire fixed. And then the, the, the whole time of dealing with these issues, because one, uh, I had a really good tow truck driver. Literally, I could just tell them to leave the keys in the cars and he would go get it wherever it was. He was really, really good. And, but the thing is, even though he was good, he would pick up the car, he would take it to where it needed to be. There was this added cost in the car rental business. Like give you an example. Um, I make, like I sell a course for 150, right? 
if I sell three courses for $150, which is $450, and I do that in a week, that is more money than I would have made for renting a car for a week. 35 bucks a day, right? 35 bucks a day times five. That's 100 and, 100 and, uh, 135 times five. 150, 175. Now, here's the thing. I had to buy the car. The cars were anywhere. The cheapest car was $6,700. I had to insure the car and I had to do all of these things. So there was a lot of cost up front to make that hundred and what? Hundred and um, sixty bucks in a week. Hundred and sixty bucks. So literally, I had to spend sixty-seven hundred plus the cost of in car insurance. And this is one of the things with car insurance. I actually had Progressive car insurance, and I didn't tell them I was renting the cars. And I just had liability on the cars once again because I paid cash, and. I never actually tried to file any claim with the, well, essentially I couldn't file a claim because I only had liability, but that insurance was costing me about 2,500 bucks per month. I had to have it to get a car tag, had to have it. And that was like, you know, and I was only in business like seven-ish months and I realized that one, it just consumed cash. It just consumed cash and it didn't really spit out. But once again, I understand it because especially for the people who are four or five or six cars, there was no way they were making a lot of money. There was just no way possible that they were making a lot of money. But once again, we have a whole legion of people who feel that in a car rental business, you're making all this money. And there was someone who literally had a huge car rental business and they had like over a hundred cars and their monthly revenue was like 200 K. Okay. And these cars were not paid for. So you could just go ahead and chop that 200K. They were probably after paying bills, bringing home 15 to maybe 20,000 a month. Because number one, you got 100 cars. You got to have a facility to store them. That's not going to be cheap. So you got the cost of that. You got the cost of the car insurance to get a tag. You got the cost. So mine was 2,500. So they were paying. 12 to 15,000 a month just for car insurance or maybe even more, maybe even more. So that was it. And then they had the issues with Toro and oh staff, there's no way that you're going to have a hundred plus car rental business and it's only going to be you. Uh, I had 31 and there was some days I was working 12, 16 hours days just as having 31 cars. So, You've got the place for the cars. You've got the staff. I think at the end of the day, they were making, you know, after all expenses, paying people 10 to 15,000 bucks per month. And they have one of the largest car rental businesses in the nation. So the car rental business, and this is why Hertz and um, I don't even know the names of these car rental businesses, but this is why they're so huge. These Hertz has hundreds of thousands of cars because you need to have a huge car rental base to make significant and decent money. You've got to be huge. And what my plan was, because like essentially I worked it on paper and when you work numbers on paper, everything works out because it's on paper, right? And the numbers did not take in account the most important thing with the car rental business, user activity. How do people use these cars? Like, I literally have found bullets, pistol belts, uh, gold teeth, all kinds of stuff in the cars, all types of stuff in the cars. And, you know, once again, look, go back to her channel, because like I said, I need to leave a comment. And um, just look, this woman was literally at home in bed crying because of the car rental business. But for some reason, there's some of you because people on the internet are straight up lying to you that you actually believe all these folks with these car rental business. There was one guy, he was doing car rentals and he was doing these videos about how to get business credit. And he only had like a handful of cars. And if, if his cars were making, you know, 1500 bucks per month times five, right? Times five. 
that's um, $7,500 per month. Plus, the cars were not paid for. So you could go ahead and just say five times 400, 2,500, three, you know, insurance. Let's go and say the cost of his cars were like 3,500. So you're making 7,500 and boom, 3,500. That's only four, that's only like maybe 50,000 a year if all your cars stay in service, if your cars are not wrecked. So, you know, these people come to YouTube and they put out these videos and they get that YouTube money. They make more money from YouTube than they make from the car rental bills. Uh, there was one guy, Nugs, who used to do DoorDash videos. I haven't checked out his channel in a while, but he made more money from doing YouTube than he did DoorDash. Because I remember he said, you know, between DoorDash and YouTube, he's making 10,000 bucks a month. $10,000 a month for a kid who's 21, 22, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. But, you know, I put this video up here because once again, you know, I'm running ads and people go, go to YouTube and see his failed car rental business. Once again, there's no discussion of how I came up with the 400000 to buy the cars. No, we, we ain't going to talk about that. We're, we're not going to talk about that. We're just going to talk about the business failed. And that's the only business. And how did you get that information that the business failed? I put that information on YouTube freely, willingly. But for some reason, people feel that someone had to dig the information out. Of, now, there's a playlist called the Kill Switch Chronicles where I actually talk about all this stuff, the stolen cars, the uh, car renter behavior, which was absolutely the worst. So go ahead, go to the new channel. We got some stuff that's different. I got some stuff that I'm gonna be working on. I got some stuff that I'm brewing. I'm getting ready to start cooking. So that's gonna be going down um, tomorrow's Friday. Friday, I've got a full day. You'll probably hear about it. I'll let, when I put it up, you'll know about it and I'll actually I got some stuff working. I'm working on, I'm cooking on some stuff. But once again, go ahead, click her video and uh, wish her the best because if I had used credit, which so many people accused me of claiming that until I put up a thumbnail with me holding all these car titles because I paid cash, that actually ended the conversation that I was using credit to buy these cars. And I understand that many of you have never been able to go to the bank and pull out $25,000 cash and you can't do that. I understand that. And that's one of the things we're going to be working on in May. But understand there are people who have money. There are people who are doing well. There are people who put themselves in a position. And honestly, the car rental business was absolutely one of the worst businesses I've ever put myself into. Worst business ever. Worst business ever. And I'll never do it again. Never, never, never do it again. All right, so that's all I got for you guys. Go to the new channel. Check that stuff out. And I will see you guys in the next video.